Well, the music you've been making for you know quite some time, as you mentioned uh, just there. I think the the description that I'm reading: um, reggae, dancehall, funk, and soul. Yes, <laughs> yeah, 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 I read it. <laughs> Yeah, is, is is that you know the term that you're comfortable with? It's 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 hip hop, but it's got you know like you know because like growing up we've listened to like different kinds of music you know like yeah you know from Bob Marley to you know mm. to all sorts to like you know Talib Kweli and everything. Mm. So it's just like you know we collaborate all our different influences mm. that we've had in the past mm. and mm. just put into the pot and what we mm. come up with is the sound of the Africs. Mm -hmm. and, and basically, it's sort of. This year in Australia, 2009, hip hop is in a very, very good state. As in two, three years ago, was what we do in this hip hop. Like hip hop is a roots. We use hip hop as a roots, but there's no abbreviation of this is hip hop. As long as you rap on top of something, that was known as hip hop. But sort of more to to attract a bigger audience than hip hop to survive. Two, three years ago, you sort of had to have reggae because people they just don't want to come and listen to one genre mm. of music. They want mm. to come and listen to deep, and that's the beautiful thing about Australia because they like music in general. You don't find people that just like rock and roll. Or, and then that's why we used to say, are we hip hop, funk, reggae? So sort of to attract that bigger audience, bigger audience to come in and just to see what we're capable of doing. And we were we like the stuff like in our car, you don't like you know you listen to Bob Marley or reggae. It's not always hip hop, hip hop, hip hop. Mm. You know. But Australian hip hop is also very different from like you know hip hop in other places because they, they, you tend to find a lot of live incorporation, like instrument incorporation mm. within the within the music. Mm -hmm. um, it's real big and it's been growing even more. You find it more in Melbourne than Sydney or anything, but like it's starting to spread a lot more all around Australia, mm -hmm. which is a great thing because, you know, um, yeah, having that live element in there, you know, just really feel the soul of the music. Mm. And this, folks, is the uh, the only hip hop act in the world with a no swearing policy. Yeah, yeah we've been doing really, really good. We've been doing so Do far, it. so good. So far, so good. Yeah, yeah so You haven't let a word slip in a show ever. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, excuse my French, as Mo says. No, no, it's it's been it's been going really well, and that's why when we first started, is we wanted to stand away from these things because that's why everybody was rap and was trying to articulate ourselves a bit more. And it's really easy because when you don't find words to put actually a swearing word, it will make it sound then that like you know more fun I guess mm. but step by step is we learn how to and we forced ourselves not to use those words as in now if we use a swearing word is is to is to get that comment we're just not going to use it just for the sake of it mm. it's just we mean something and if we put that swearing word it means that we actually meant it yeah yeah like yeah yeah but obviously that was a policy that you sort of decided very early on in the piece yeah well, we, we kind of just uh, also we didn't want to limit ourselves and be like okay cool like you know it's only for this audience kind of a thing you know like we having that in there also allows like younger kids to listen to the music and their parents not giving them a hard mm -hmm. time you know like growing up for myself like i wasn't allowed to listen to tupac and all that because my old man was like yeah there's a lot of cussing <laughs> in there and, yeah. you know, and, but, um, yeah. and as well as leaders in the community as sort of when as most artists they sort of become certain to a certain degree of, of fame or something and then go back to the community but within with us we sort of grew with the community so even if we was to put a track that's swearing we're going to go to a workshop one day and then if they play that track sort of Doesn't stuffed we'll be we'll be preaching against the what we're saying you know mm -hmm. so that's why we always had that that responsibility amongst ourselves too to not put those words or not to put the n-word for example and mm. things like that like mm. yeah. you've had uh, like more than a five-year history now which yeah, is yeah. Uh, you know really really interesting for a band about to release the first album album mm. yeah yes. so i guess you know in that time that's given you a lot of time to basically define your sound as yeah. well hasn't mm. it yeah definitely yeah Mm. Uh, yeah, it was like um, like you know, like we just thought we weren't really ready. Like we want, we wanted to learn more about the industry and what we'll, and what we could do, because you know, f for us it's about like um, you know, playing live especially is about not just playing a gig. It's about entertainment. You know what I mean? It's like um, you know, we want to make sure that all the punters leave with a smile on their face, remembering what, who the band is, and make sure that they want to come and see us again. So it was like within that time we were working on our live set, and then. You know, we and it's also the way that we write our songs, we rehearse them and play them live, then take them into the studio and record them. Mm. You know, um, and so it gave us a lot of time to do that and not rush ourselves with the first album because the first album is always the first album. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. And we were lucky that we survived out of the two, the mm. two EPs. The radios kept on playing them, and we we had a good run for for five years. And mm. again, is that having this advice from our fellow friends, friends that been through the game and telling us what to do, sort of like, don't call a record company, let a record company call you, because if, if they're not calling you, you're not doing the right job, you know? Not saying that 
uh, within after we fit the, in the place we were talking with record companies about signing it up but it's sort of we didn't felt ready mm. we did not know the Definitely. game we we sort of saw and there was and we said why rush we're still young you know let's just take it out see what's going on as in now we understand the game when there's an interview we're trying to come on time and you know and then things like that as when we're more grown and we they were five minutes late no <laughs> four minutes and 35 seconds <laughs> yeah yeah Basically. Yeah. Well, you've had, uh, you know, in that five-year period, some great gigs that you've uh, had really? the opportunity to play with and, and big festivals. Big Day Out, yeah. uh, big Meredith. Meredith. Yeah, yeah. Festival. Festival. I mean, getting, getting up in front of a lot of people, you know, is that uh, sort of different than just a few people down in the audience? No, nah, I, I love it. I, yeah. I, I really enjoy it. Like, um, I haven't been, like, my first ever gig, actually, oh. first ever gig I ever played, um, I told my parents not to come. And, <laughs> and, um, and I was sick on the day and I started losing my voice and all of a sudden I jump on the stage and then they are. Uh, so um, that helped me overcome a lot of nerves and, you know, so um, I, now I, I just enjoy it. I love watching the crowd get into it and, you know, it's kind of like, um, you know, they give you a certain amount of energy and you just give it back and so it's like you're doing it all together. Yeah. Well, you must have had a, a best gig that comes to mind and I'm, I'm guessing there's probably been a worst gig that comes to mind. Uh, oh, ah. Do you remember? Oh man, you got the worst gig for me. Would probably, it was one of the worst gig, but the most uncomfortable was inside the Parliament House in Canberra. Yeah. Right? Really? Yeah. And, and then, yeah, and you had all those politicians and we just had to perform there and it's just like, <laughs> okay, look at us. We're generals, we're soldiers. We gotta do what we gotta do for the name of hip hop. Yeah. Jump on the microphone, do it. And then, and then yeah, so some gigs, they just, the most awkward, but it teaches you. Like, you know, if you have to entertain three, and that's how we learn, like, we expanded our music. Sometimes we got date festivals and we play at two o'clock and everybody's just laying by the sun. So we're not gonna tell, okay, everybody, get up, stand up, yeah. da, da, da. they're relaxing. Yeah. So then, because of our experience, so we play more that relax and kick back music, and we're sort of understanding that if people don't dance, they're still enjoying it. Yeah. As in, if we didn't have that experience, we'd be like panicking, said, oh shit, no one's liking it, no one is there. Yeah. Well, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take you back to that uh, that Parliament House gig you were just t telling us about, because I was unaware that uh, Parliament House actually had a club in it. A club, <laughs> <laughs> tell me about it, man, you just that. Bit of a nice <laughs> nightclub there, <laughs> is it? Yeah, 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 they, they were, they were, no. Now it was, because we do a lot of work with the Australian Council for the Arts, like our community, so we get mm. to do those gigs that sort of, you know, and it was to celebrate the multicultural of arts and yeah. they celebrate inside and they had all different types, but then they thought it would be more belly dancing and stuff like that. And then they just, the Australian Council, thanks for them to have a hip hop act in it. And it was just, we just played and it was good. The yeah. response was, we have even spoke to Philip, Philip Rado. Mm. Oh, nice. And he was one of the dudes that was giving me a bit of a hard time when I was trying to get my <laughs> finger rights. And I told him, see, see when you accept us, this is what we do. We entertain, you know, and then sort of, it was good. It was a good comeback. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's definitely getting even. That's for sure. <laughs> that's yeah. good. And you got to uh, perform overseas this year. Yeah, yeah. we um we are uh, after finishing the album, we decided to head off to um, Europe and we played in France. You know what was the name of the town? Uh, France. So we played the Champs Elysees. Champs, Champs Elysees. Elysees. I can't yeah. remember the venue. Yeah, we went to we went to Europe more to sort of because no one as well as the industry sort of there's there's a big market in asia and mm. europe and before we get signed up we just wanted to we had a little break and we saved a, a bit of money from playing a lot and then we decided to go and see what's going on out there and we we've learned and we've saw what's the music level in europe it's a lot yeah like hip hop music in general is a lot more um bigger and uh like especially like the underground hip-hop mm. over there is not like here like here um not that many people know of it it's only starting to bridge out a lot more we're over there it's like Underground is like commercial, considered as like commercial over there, and um, you know, I got to meet with like some great um promoters and meet up with some great DJs, DJs, booking agencies. We met even with some MCs. It was really, really good. And as well, we played in Vanuatu, which is not far away from mm. Australia, about three years ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. in the island, it was called <laughs> Napoon Festival. Mm. That was really good too. That was yeah. like like fifteen thousand people free festival. Wow. We met the president, came backstage. Yeah. President, the president, yeah. of Vanuatu, the state of the chief, yeah, yeah. the state of the chief. So, yeah. so it's because of music, thankfully, it's like we already made it. I feel that I already made it. Like for six years, we had such great memories, you know. Mm. Yeah. And that's that's the beautiful thing about it. Yeah, look at this guy, folks. Presidents, chiefs, <laughs> yeah, you know, politicians in Australia. And we even yeah. haven't had a top ten yet. 